Hey, what is going on, everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome to another video. Oh, and I don't even know what series this is anymore. Just a miscellaneous video that I'm throwing out there for you guys to learn something new. Uh, actually, I'm working on a little bit of a backlog of videos that I've been meaning to get to, and I just haven't made it there. A lot going on lately, folks, and it's tough keeping up with this catalog of videos sometimes. Anyhow, one of the questions that has been posed to me in the past, uh, several questions actually, but this one I just happen to be working on at the moment, is the L10 and the translations inside of FarmSim, okay? Now, I'm sure we've come across this at one point or another. You've seen this, uh, maybe it threw an error in the game, or you've just come across it somewhere in one of your XMLs, and you didn't quite know what the heck was going on there, or how to even go about implementing it into your own project uh, and get things working correctly. All right. So I know there's been some confusion that, you know, some people struggle with it. Some people don't uh, kind of is what it is, but I think today we're going to try and clear this up a little bit and make a little bit more sense out of this. Uh, so you guys, you know, have a better understanding and, and can, you know, implement this into your own project. Okay. So recently, like I said, I've been working on my own map. I've been getting closer. I don't want to say the completion, but I'm getting there. Uh, but anyhow, I, I just did my uh, my train system. I had that all, all settled and in place. Uh, speaking of which, I came across something in my train system that uh, would be a correction on one of my past videos. Not that I did anything wrong, but I was trying to do something that I figured out a different way to do it, and, and maybe we'll discuss that in a little bit. All right. Now, this L10N uh, I'm not even sure why it's L10. Now, it's L as in Larry. Now, I've seen people say 110N, I10N. I've seen just about <laughs> every every variation, but it's L. It's L as in Larry, the number one, the number zero, the letter N, L10N. All right, and those are a translation. So if you have something inside one of your scripts and, and you have an English version for it and you're trying to reach a broader audience, uh, you know, maybe it's like... German or French or Polish or what have you, uh, you can put the, uh, the translation for whatever that English term is, or maybe you're German and you want to do an English translation, right? That's what this is. It's the translation. Okay. So like I said, I was working on my train system and I just happened to be looking at this file now. So I did implement this into my translations. Okay. And you can see here under hotspots. Okay. Uh, and this is what it normally looks like. If you look right here where it says unloading train, I have text equals, I have dollar sign L10N underscore station underscore blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then right below that, I have another translation. All right. So just about anything can go here, right? So this is kind of a placeholder. It's a variable of sorts, right? For whatever you want to be there. Okay. Now this, this uh, variable corresponds uh, to another a definition somewhere, right? So a variable is meant to, to hold some kind of value. It's a temporary placeholder for a value. So that value is usually uh, depicted somewhere else, right? So we set that value somewhere else and tell it what that value is going to be. And in this case, that value is, is the term, whatever name is going to go in there, the text that we want to be in there, okay? And in this case, it's, it's just city names, right? So this could be anything. It could be Ravenport. Uh, it could be just about anything, all right? Now, the one thing to keep in mind uh, here with the train station or the train system, I should say, uh, the, what used to be here is, uh, mm, what was there? The zero 01 was not at the end of it, right? So it was this, this station, U.S. train, other town. Uh, and it was one of the uh, the farms in more popular names, not Ravenport. It's older than that. Goldcrest Valley. That's what it was. All right. So now if I didn't want this to say Goldcrest Valley, right, I couldn't just redefine another term. Uh, it, you can't overwrite the, uh, the base game names. Okay. So if I don't want Goldcrest Valley, I actually have to give it a different variable, right? So Instead of train other town, I just gave it a new variable of train other town zero one. All right. So you can't just overwrite the, you know, the variable by, by keeping the same or not, or not the variable. You can't overwrite it with the same variable. You have to give it a new variable. Okay. So if I kept this station US train other town, 
it would keep saying Goldcrest Valley no matter what, right? So once they give it a new variable and it matches something in my, uh, in my L10N, then there you go. Then it'll, it'll, it'll put the new name. All right. So hopefully you understand what that is. Like I said, I'm sure that you've come across it before and maybe you understand it. Maybe you don't. All right. So the definitions for these generally, at least base game wise, uh, are stored in a separate file that we don't typically have access to. Okay. But there are different places when you're creating a mod, whether it's a mod map or it's a placeable or something like that. Uh, there's places that we can define these values, right? And they don't have to be in a secret hidden file somewhere. So the place that we would define these is right here in the mod desk, okay? So everything kind of comes back to the mod desk in, in one respect or another. All right, so down here towards the bottom of my mod desk, I have two entries here, right? So I have this first one here that says L10N, but I have another one right below it. All right, so now the way that this would typically work, if we go back to this train station here, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything after that dollar sign L10N underscore. So the station US train other town zero one, right? I am going to copy that, okay? And then let's get back over to the mod disk there. And that's what's going to go in the name here, all right? You don't want to put the, uh, the dollar sign L10N underscore. That doesn't go in here. Just the name here, the station, US train, other town. All right. So now whatever you want that to be, all right. So maybe you do want it to be Ravenport. Maybe you want it to be, oh, I, I don't know anything. I mean, we could put Chicago in here if we want to, right? So that's what this other town now, the variable is set to Chicago. That's what the value is. All right. And I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the translation for the German translation here uh, would also be Chicago, okay? But <clears throat> this this comes in handy when you have other things that aren't proper names, right? So uh, maybe it's something for tractor or, oh, I don't know, any other term that does have a translation, right? So you would put the English here, this EN stands for English, and the DE is for German. And there there is a list of codes somewhere if you need to know uh, what the other codes are. So say you're doing Polish, you're doing French. I think French is FR, uh, but there is a, a list of abbreviations, right, for these translations. All right, so this is one way that you would do it. You would do it right in your mod desk, okay? So you would have an opening and a closing tag. The opening tag would be L10N. The closing tag would also be L10N. And right what you see here in the middle, this text name equals, uh, that's where your actual translation goes, okay? And this goes for anything in your project, right? So it does need to be unique. This variable here needs to be unique, right? If it's anything that is already used inside of the base game, from my own experience, now maybe I'm incorrect on this, but from my own experience, you cannot overwrite the base game variables, right? So if it's a base game variable, whatever that value is, it's still going to be shown in the game. So like I said, if you're trying to overwrite where it says, uh, Goldcrest Valley by using the same variable. And all you're trying to do is just, just give that same variable a new value here will not work. You need to change the variable. It has to be something unique to your project. All right. From my experience, now maybe I'm incorrect, but I could never seem to overwrite the base game variables. All right. Using the same variable. And in this case, I, instead of the same variable, I just tacked on a zero one to the end of it. All right. So like I said, this applies project wide. Uh, so anything that you have going on here, and there's, var there's variables everywhere, right? So these translations you can see right here is a, a type desk for a locomotive. So if I wanted to give that, oh, I don't know, a different description, the uh, type description for the locomotive, I can do that here. Um, again, I'd have to give it a new variable, though. I couldn't rewrite this same variable. Couldn't overwrite that because whatever their value is, is what's going to stick, right? I have to give this a new variable. All right. And any one of your files here, any one of them, uh, you can come up with your own variable and just make sure that you have that in your mod disk. All right. Now this mod disk, if you're keeping them in the mod desk, uh, that, that only really comes in handy is if you have just a small handful, right? If you have a large project and you got many, many translations, right? You have English, German, French, Polish, and you just have a whole laundry list of uh, translations, 
you probably don't want to do it this way. Okay. So there is a secondary way. Now, out of these two that you see here, you can only choose one. You can either put your translations in the mod desk itself, or you can have a separate file that holds all of your translations. All right. And that's, that's what I opted to do with this, uh, with my current project, even though I only have two translations in there right now, uh, that's still the way I decided to go just to keep my mod desk a little bit cleaner. Okay. So the second way is it's, it's just one tag. We have the uh, L110N and then file name prefix equals. Now we're telling it what folder to look in and we're telling it the prefix. All right. Now I haven't experimented with this, but I believe this L10N is only the prefix. So when you look and you see uh, the dollar sign underscore L10N, you can set that prefix to anything you want, right? So you could have, doesn't have to be L10 and it could be anything. I could be incorrect on that. So don't hold me to that. I did not verify that. I just assume that's what they mean by prefix. You know, you're defining the prefix here. And as long as you keep using this prefix, you'll be okay. Um, so like I said, you can test that out on your own. Maybe you can make it instead of L10N, you can make it, oh, I don't know, M16W, <laughs> whatever you want. All right. So in this case, we need a translations folder. All right. And that's, that's what I did uh, in my project here. Let me see where I was here. We go into mods, right? So I gave myself a translations folder that you can see right here. And inside of translations are where all of my, my translation files are going to be. Now, what was different is the way we had it previously, we had the English translation, German, French, all in that one text value, right? And that, that one line in using this method, we don't have that, right? So all your English translations are going to be in one file. Like you see here, I have this L10N underscore EN. Now, if I wanted to do German translations, I would have a separate XML would be L10N underscore EE. Uh, same thing with French translations. I'd have a third file, L10N underscore FR, and that's where I would keep those translations. All right, so if I open this up, uh, now you have the normal header that you would have here for any XML file. So this header, it's important that it must be here. This is an XML file. Uh, and then this looks just kind of basically like you had uh, inside of your mod desk, right? So you had the opening and closing tags of the L10N, uh, and this one here is, you could have this, this is just for information purposes. It doesn't really, it's not required where translation uh, contributors, this one just says Bauer Brown, but if I happen to be working with somebody else, uh, then I could put their name in there as well. And in this way, we know who's contributing to the project. All right. And like I said, everything inside of this file looks just like it would uh, for the most part. Uh, in the my desk. All right. So here's the text that I have, right? So text, and then we start with uh, the station US train other town. And here is what I, one of them is called Lynn and the other one is called Clifton, right? So now if I want to rename any of these, I don't have to go digging around, you know, a thousand different files and trying to find where each one of those variables are used because those variables could be used in many, many places, right? And that's what makes this easy. You don't want to have to go back to each one of those files and try to figure out where you use that variable and change it. And I had a bad habit of doing this because if you look in the, uh, let's say the selling station train, right? So right here, I could give this any name I want. I could type Goldcrest Valley in here and that's fine. It would work. All right. But you really don't want to do that. It's bad form. It's bad habit. Uh, and I had a bad habit of doing that for a long time just because I, I do that. <laughs> I don't know. I had, I should be one of those practice what you preach kind of people, but sometimes I'm not, you know, I'm human just like everybody else. And sometimes I just, you know, stick the, uh, the English version of whatever I want in there and that will not translate. All right. So if somebody in Germany is playing the game, they're going to get my English word, whatever word I put in there, that's what they're going to get. All right. But now since I, I took the time and I, and I put translation files, it will translate into their, their language. All right. So like I said, you need to be in the mod disk here and this is what you want to put. You're going to put the L10N, the opening tag, file name, prefix equals, uh, give it a folder if you want to. I, I suggest that you do. It doesn't have to be translations. It could be any folder you want, uh, but I, I stuck with translations uh, and then forward slash L10N as my prefix. And then I just carried that, that prefix over through the folder uh, and, and started everything with L10N underscore. 
Okay, so then you have underscore en, underscore fr, underscore de, uh, you get the idea. And within there is where your translations would sit. So like I said, just a couple things to keep in mind is you can have one or the other. You can have everything in a separate file on its own, or you can have all of your translations in the mod desk, but you can't have both. Uh, you cannot overwrite base game files. Like I said, prove me wrong. I, I could be wrong. I, I really could, but it's just never been my experience that I was able to overwrite one of the base game variables. It has to be a un unique variable to your project, uh, and then you can assign it a value of your choosing, okay? And you can change them anywhere you want. But that's why we use this. One, like I said, for people in, you know, other nationalities, other countries that, you know, if, if they're... Uh, playing the game in their preferred language, uh, that it will translate well. You know, it'll translate over to their language and they don't have to try to figure things out, which is, it's, it's very convenient. It's a very handy feature. Uh, and by keeping all of these uh, values and translations in one area, uh, you don't have to worry about going through a hundred different files in your project and try to find each instance where this may or may not be used, okay? So having everything in one central location uh, is what really makes things work here, okay? Uh, and that's it. There really is no big mystery to the translation files. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've fielded questions on translations. Where do I put them? You know, what does it mean? I mean, it's, and I get it. When I started out, I came across errors. I'm like, the hell is that? Now, where do I find that? And I, maybe I found it in the mod desk for that mod, and that's normally what would be the case because for each mod that you use uh, has its own mod desk and the translations for just that mod would be in the mod desk for that mod, okay? And this mod desk for our maps just happens to be the mod desk for your mod, for your map mod, right? And that's where all of your translations go. They're, they're, like I said, you have, you have two options to either keep them in the mod desk itself or in a separate file like I did here, right? So file name prefix equals, and then just off you go. And then, like I said, it's important that, you know, you, you start a file for each one of your languages and make sure, you know, you do all the translations. But that's it. No mystery, really easy, and easy peasy. <laughs> all right, so for, for those of you out there who have answered that question, now I did answer it, or for those of you who have asked that question, I did answer it. I know that I always answer, or at least try to, uh, answer all of your questions in the comment section or emails or however I get those questions. So I did answer it, uh, but I've been meaning to do a video on it. And now finally, here it is. So hopefully uh, people from this point forward can just watch the video and they may not, never need to ask that question again. <laughs> all right. So there you go. If uh, these guys have been struggling with this or you just didn't know what it was about, now you do. Hopefully it made some sense. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been at the, uh, actually, I forgot what I was going to say there. Yep. Either way, that's it. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to leave it at that. All right. So like I said, hopefully you find this information useful in some fashion, some way, shape or form. Uh, and if you do, you know, make sure to give the video like thumbs up really helps me a lot. Um, subscribe if you can. Oh, uh, and that's it. With that being said, I am Bauer Brown and I'm going to see you on the next one.